You lot are the ones we've been waiting for. You are the ones we've been waiting for because I think you are going to be the first generation that will unlock the power of the heart. This heart, this thing, this immense power source that we have is a source of unlimited energy and it connects us all. And I'm really excited because I think we're just about to enter an age of human existence we're gonna, where we're going to rely on so much more of what makes us human, including the power of these fearless hearts to reimagine, rebuild and rethink this world that we live in. Whereas in the past, we have relied very much on smaller parts of ourselves, like our intellect, for example. So, let me tell you a bit about myself. Um, when I was younger, a lot of stuff really used to hack me off. But one thing that did a lot of damage and um, led, led me into a kind of a negative pattern of thought was this question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Now, I understand that the people asking me that question were actually asking me, what is it that I want to do? Um, my job, for example. But that question, what do I want to be, really led me to think about what is, what's my purpose? What's the thing that defines me? What's the thing that makes me me? Well, let me tell you, on my journey so far, let me tell you some of the stuff that I figured out that I'm not. I am not my stuff. I'm not my parents. I'm not what my parents want me to be. It doesn't matter how good their intentions have been. I'm not my bank balance. I'm not my parents' bank balance. I'm not what you say or think that I am. I'm not my school or the university that I went to. I'm not my past. I'm not my future. I am not my nationality. I am not my friends. I am not my relationships. I am not only this strange body that you see in front of you, and I am not only the thoughts in my head. So if I'm not any of those things, who the badger am I, and who's call calling the shots? So, even though I really struggled to understand the thing that made me me, I was always really clear on the stuff that I loved, and those two are very different. I always had the confidence to go after those things that I really loved as well, because I grew up in a family of superheroes, which was really nice. Um, here's three of them. Um, this is uh, my, my grandmother, the world's best dog, sorry I'm biased, and my grandfather, who I'd love to speak to you about, because he had a particularly powerful superpower. And it came from him in the form of a message, and he took it everywhere that he went. Um, and it came out of him naturally. And I've met people that have heard this message from my grandfather, the people that he spent time with in their life, and we all have something in common. We've all gone on to do some pretty cool things, and this message unleashed that. We all acknowledge this message. And he used to say to me, Adam, dear boy, I love you unconditionally and therefore I want the best for you. So simply, I want you to follow your heart. Because if you follow your heart, you're far more likely to live a more joyful and meaningful existence. But more importantly, if you follow your heart, if you unleash the power of this thing, you're going to give permission, you're going to give inspiration to other people to do the same thing. Now, I find this really, really funny because our hearts aren't quiet. My heart's making me shake right now. Our hearts aren't quiet. They regularly tell you things it regularly makes a noise, but very few of us trust it. Very few of us trust in our heart. And I don't blame anybody because we've grown up in a world that was predominantly built by the head. And we, we are taught that this thing, the mind, the head, con the brain, controls everything, include telling, including telling the heart what to do. Well, what's really exciting is some research that's been done by the HeartMath Institute over the last... 40 years, has actually shown that the heart sends more neurological signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. Moreover, those signals that the heart is sending to the brain have a massive effect on the, how your brain performs. Um, and it also has a further effect on your um, emotional state. So let, let me give you a couple of examples. I'm sure all of you lot can remember the last time that you felt in a flap, in a panic, where you felt as though you're in a negative emotional state. When I was your age, it was always in exams. I'm dyslexic as hell, it caused me a lot of problems. So when, um, when you enter that emotional state, that negative emotional state, your heart responds by sending fluctuating negative signals to your brain. And that stops your brain from doing, the HeartMath Institute have identified that it stops your brain from doing what it needs to do properly. It reduces your memory, it reduces your capacity to solve problems, but it also further increases the feeling of feeling panicked, which explains why some of us, me included, can get into a flat from time to time. The great news is, is that they also found out the opposite is completely true. And I hope these words mean a lot to you. It's just like, can you guys all remember the last time you entered a state of flow? 
when you felt incredible. It could have been the last time you were playing sport. It could have been the last time you were creating, coming up with a good idea, having eureka moments. You'd nailed a problem. When you enter that state of flow, it feels like flow, and that's because your heart is sending powerful, simple, strong messages to your brain, helping it do better. You can remember more, you can do more. You can, your ability to solve problems goes through the roof. And this, for me, is the heart of us. So if we have this incredible um, instrument at the heart of us, and if we know that it tells this thing to do as much as this thing tells this thing much to do, then we, we, we need to at least be respecting them equally. So if this thing is that powerful, then how on earth do we unlock the power of it? So that message that my grandfather gave me led to me going on to, to create an organization that would set out to unleash that incredible power in the hearts of the greatest doers on the planet, of entrepreneurs, of individuals who touch the lives of so many other people. And if we can unleash, the basic idea was if we could unleash the power of the heart in those people, we would make the world a better place. Um, it's been an incredible journey, and we've learned a lot about untapping the power of the heart. And I would love to share with you guys three lessons that we've, we've picked up along the world. So how do we tap into that power? Here we go. First rule, you've got to get out of your head. A lot of people would have heard the term self-awareness. This is what we mean. You need to get out of your head and understand that you are not your thoughts and emotions. Your thoughts and emotions are not you. You are the awareness that sits behind those thoughts and emotions, and you can see the whole of yourself. Now, the important thing is at this stage, when you start to notice the whole of yourself, when you start to really pick, on, pick up when you are having thoughts and emotions, you can trust your whole self. When you can see your whole self, the next step is to start trusting your whole self and making decisions from that point, making that decisions from your whole humanity. And the most powerful thing that you can do on top of these two that reinforces the first two is share it with others. Because once you've unleashed this incredible power source that sits at the heart of us, the whole of ourselves, when you share it with others, it frees you and it frees the rest of the world. It frees you and it frees the rest of the world because you become connected to everybody around you and you, come, you become connected to the whole of which we are all one. So here, here are some, a couple of quotes from two people I greatly admire um, that bring this to light. The first from Marilyn Williamson on the power of the heart. She says, in every community there is work to be done. In every nation there are wounds to heal. In every heart there is the power to do it and on the power of the connection that exists between every one of us in this room and on the rest of the planet is this. From Mother Teresa, if we have no peace, it's because we've forgotten we belong to each other. So, some more words of wisdom from Grandpa again. Now, these are not Grandpa's words of wisdom, but he used to share them with me regularly, and they are powerful. So here you go, I love this. He used to say, Adam, dear boy, he started a lot like that, Adam, dear boy. Life is like a roller coaster, and when you choose to get on it, you think it's real, because that's how incredible and beautiful and powerful your brain is. But it is only ever a ride. It goes up and down and round and round. It's bright, it's scary. It can be really, really fun, but it is only ever a ride. Don't be afraid, don't be scared ever, because it is only a ride. And you can change it any time you like, because you have choice. You can choose how you respond to any given situation, to any emotion, to any feeling. And that choice is simply between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to choose somebody else's version of success for you. Um, be, be a version of success that, that, that hurts other people along the journey. Um, enter a cycle of negativity fed by an unhappy heart that pulls you further away from everybody else. The eyes of love simply recognize that we are all one. And every time that we choose one, our hearts are right there behind us, filling your head full of more positivity and more power that enables you to be more you. Choose love because it enables you to be a better version of yourself. Practice forgiveness. Don't be a victim. Don't take things personally. Be cash passionate, kind, and considerate with yourself because these are all different manifestations of the same thing. Choosing love. So... What am I? What do I want to be when I grow up? What am I now? I am the awareness that sits behind my head and my heart and makes the decision between fear and love every day. I am my head working with my heart. I am one with all of you. Now the truth is, I forget this all the time. I often get lost in my thoughts and emotions. I often forget the incredible power that exists in my heart and in the whole of my humanity. But if enough of us choose, 
then we can choose to build a new world, a world full of fearless hearts. And when I talk about fearless hearts, I'm not talking about the absence of fear, I'm talking about the presence of courage, courage that we have all enabled to be there because we are choosing to move as one, as one global family. So that is my leave behind for you lot here today, which is simply this. Notice the entire of yourself, the whole of yourself, trust it, share it with others, and help us build a world full of fearless hearts. Thank you very much.